Good morning YouTube. Today I'm going to show you our daily goat routine. This is part of a collaboration with several other awesome channels. I'll link down below um, if you want to check out how they're doing things. I've already learned a lot by watching these videos and I'm looking forward to showing you how we handle our goats every day. Mornings start pretty early around here. Generally, I get up at six o'clock, and right now, since it's so hot outside, I usually do my garden chores first and get out here to milk the goats around 8.30. Now, this morning, I had an early morning egg delivery to a local bakery at 6.30, and then after that, I had to go to the grocery store because I have some friends coming over for brunch. So right now, it's about nine, and I'm just now getting out to milk, and they are not happy about it. I hear the cries of a baby in distress. Hey buddy, come here. Did you get stuck? Come here buddy, there you go. He's back over to mama now. Don't know how long he was under there. Crisis averted. The thing with goats is, is they get themselves into trouble a lot. And we have a lot of goats. Um, currently, we have 12 adults and I don't even know how many kids. I can't remember because we've sold few lately. Um, we'll be keeping out of the kids. We had 12 born this year. We bought two bucklings to bring in. So once it's all said and done, we'll have six of the kids left because we're gonna sell a couple of more. Um, so anyway. A lot of goats and that equates a lot of times to a lot of trouble my milkers know the drill here they are waiting by the gate for me so whenever I was first asked to be a part of this collaboration I had big plans of organizing my milk stall and uh, making things really pretty and put together but the fact of the matter is that's just not my life um, everything we do is a little bit um, fly by the seat of our pants. We're learning. If um, if I put on some show that I know what I'm talking about, I'm worried I might mislead you. The truth of the matter is, we've had two goats for about two years. Um, the first year and a half of that, I would say they were probably uh, living on prayers more than anything. It wasn't like we were husband, you know, like walking in great husbandry. Uh, we took good care of them and they were healthy, but we were not goat experts by any means. In December of last year, we came across a local family that has been breeding Nubians for a long time and um, we ended up working out a trade with them where my husband did um, some work on their property in trade for pretty much a ready-made herd we actually ended up getting 13 adult goats for them uh, six of which were bred so in the matter of six months we went from two goats to an entire herd. So it's been a learning process where we've learned very quickly. Um, we've made a lot of mistakes. We, um, we've lost one goat in that process, which according to our goat mentor, uh, we did everything that we could. So it's, uh, there's, been, there's been blood, sweat, and tears involved. And like I said, we don't have it all together. Um, I'll show you what we do. I'll be honest about it and I'll tell you that we're still learning all the time. There are so many things, especially resources like this, where you have a handful of farms sharing their experiences, sharing their routines, sharing their research. This is how you learn and this is how you get better. When you know better, you do better. So it's best to just gather information and grow and um, we're inviting you to do that along with us. We currently have six does in milk on our farm. Um, however, I'm only milking four of those every day. Two of them, um, I decided to go ahead and pull out of our daily milking routine. They were really difficult. They were improving some as far as learning to be milked, but um, one of them was having some issues with their udder. The other one was just incredibly obstinate and they both were feeding twins. So I decided 
recognizing my own limitation as far as the physical ability to hand milk six goats and the time restraint of hand milking six goats, I decided to pare it back a little bit because four were filling more than enough of our need for milk. Now, the other two that I'm not milking, they're still raising kids. That means they're staying in milk. And I'll have the option anytime between now and whenever they start weaning those kids and drying off to add them into the daily milk routine and keep them in milk. Uh, right now, though, I just didn't need them. Now, of the four that I am milking, three do not have kids on them at all. We either pulled their kids, one of them weaned, uh, we weaned her because she had gotten old enough to no longer need to nurse. Now, one is still raising kids, so we, we pull her kids at night, we put them in a stall separate from her, milk her in the morning, and then give the kids back. So in the morning, I milk four goats. In the evening, I milk three. In the morning, it takes roughly 30 minutes. In the evening, it takes about 20 because it's one less. Our milk stand is a really basic little room added onto the side of our barn. Um, we built this kind of in a hurry, sided it with pallets. Um, we hung a couple of crates here. This is a disinfectant spray that I'll spray the milk stand with after we're done. I brought these jars out and my pail out here. This is the feed that I'm going to use and give them. And um, here you see the stand that we built. It's got a bucket for feed. It's got this that we can put their head in. This is just a towel we wrapped around it because some of our girls were able to pull their head out. They stand here. I've got my little medical kit here. And here's the gate and our waiting ladies. Come here, Here's the cool thing about this collab. I've already learned some things that I wanna to change to do differently. Now, up until this point, I've just been using wipes to wipe down my girls' udders whenever they come in um, before we milk and then wipe them down whenever we're done. It's worked. Um, several people that I know that raise goats do it this way. However, watching Gilbrook Farms video as part of her goat routine collab, inspired me to change the way we do this. One of the things that's really bothered me about this method is the amount of waste. It's a lot of wipes. And while it's kept things clean and di disease free, it bothers me to go through so much paper products if I don't have to. So I love the fact that she used a bucket of solution and then also was able to use it to wash her standoff afterwards. Whereas we've been um, using a spray bottle of disinfectant and a mop to clean ours, it seems so much easier to go ahead and reuse the same solution that you're cleaning the other udder with. I also felt like using the teat dip that had the bleach water in it would probably be more effective at keeping disease and infection at bay than what I've been doing. Like I said, haven't had any problems yet. However, I just feel like it would work better. So I'm gonna be changing that really soon. I actually just keep forgetting to buy a bucket at the store. So that's why you still see me using the wipes. Now, I gave my, uh, my girl polyester here, when she first came up on the stand, I gave her this pint and a half cup of our feed mix. She's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and give her her next one. I don't give them all their feed at once because it tends to uh, make them go a little faster eat a little faster if they've got it all in there that slows them down for some reason to split it up so they get three cups of that mix in the morning and then in the evening milking they're usually not as full in their udder so i can usually milk them out within the time it takes to give them one of those pint and a half cups you see you still see a little kicking and stuff for my girls that's because they are kind of new you just got to be fast with the bucket Polyester is a first freshener and she just kitted on May 20th. Today is 
June 14th. So she's like less than four weeks out from kidding. And I get roughly a quart from her in the morning and a quart from her in the evening. That is kind of low, but her production will go up um, as long as I continue milking her out completely. She got a little bit of a cold a couple weeks ago whenever the weather was doing some crazy stuff and that seemed to affect her supply a little bit. Now I have other does that are producing a lot better than that. So I'm expecting that her milk supply is going to go up the further we get out and the more uh, we continue to milk her daily. When I finish milking one of my does, I take the milk and I just pour it into one of these jars. Now, if we're going to use this for human consumption, I'll take it in the house and strain it. However, right now we're also feeding bottle babies and I don't bother straining it for the bottle babies because if they were they, if they were nursing directly from a mom, um, a little hair and dirt wouldn't be an issue then. So what I'd normally do is I bring out two jars and I fill one that I don't strain. See, I'll do different lids so I can tell them apart. I'll fill one that I won't strain. That's the bottle baby milk. And then I'll bring one out that I will strain and this is what we'll use in our kitchen. watched many of my videos before you've seen me mention mayhem mayhem is my quirky milker that's what i call her because whenever i was milk stand training her she lived up to her name it was awful she donkey kicked and turned the bucket over and nearly hanged herself on the stand almost every day for like two weeks then we finally figured it out mayhem likes to be milked from behind if i'll sit next to her and milk her this way she for the most part doesn't give me a hard time so that's what i do the feed mix we use consists of alfalfa pellets a sweet feed mix a dairy goat pellet from a um, local feed store and also just a regular goat pellet from a local feed store. The dairy goat parrot pellet has a higher protein. The reason why we mix these four components together is because occasionally a feed store or a mill will have a production problem and not be able to provide something like a sweet feed or a goat pellet. And what we like to do is mix these four together because then if for some reason one of the components is not available, we can substitute that one thing and not drastically change their feed. For goats being rumin ruminants, um, a drastic change in their feed can cause to uh, problems with the rumen be being disrupted and it can cause to si cause sickness. So for us, we like to mix this. Now all of these, um, this is one part sweet feed, one part goat pellet, two parts dairy goat pellet, two parts alfalfa. And we mix it up in these five gallon buckets. All of our goats get uh, an equal mix of this. The dairy does that are being milked, they get the extra dairy goat and extra alfalfa. And like I said, they get um, about three pints of this each in the morning. Now, if I'm noticing that one of my girls is looking nice and full bodied, I might uh, just supplement hers with a little extra alfalfa and cut back on all of this. And that way she's uh, still getting plenty to eat on the stand so she'll stand for me to milk her. If I'm noticing that they're looking a little bit um, skinny, then I just go ahead and give them an extra cup of feed. So far we haven't had any problems really keeping weight on any of our girls and this seems to be working pretty well for us. 
I also take the opportunity when I've got my girls on the stand to check their eyelids, keep an eye on their hoofs, see if they need to be trimmed at all, see if they need to be uh, dewormed at all. Now we do not trim hooves while we milk or right after we're done milking. If I notice that their hoofs need some attention, I let them off and then we come back out just a little while later get them back on the stand, give them more treats on the stand, and trim their hooves then. I don't want them to associate this with that because they don't like having their, their hooves trimmed. And um, since they all were first fresheners and we, we had to go through the process of getting them used to being milked, I didn't want to have any sort of negative association with this process. We have two livestock guardian dogs for our goat herd. Dakota, who's a great Pyrenees, and Chuck Norris, who is a Great Pyrenees Anatolian Shepherd mix. They do a good job. They stay out here with the ladies all the time. And mostly they bark to keep other things away. However, there have been a couple of times that other stray dogs have tried to come up and uh, get in the fence with a herd and things get pretty serious then. We currently have two uh, bottle babies. Uh, they, this one right here is a buckling that we bought. Um, he'll be breeding stock for us uh, this coming fall. And then this little guy is one that was born here on our farm. But his mom uh, was having some issues with her udder. And so I decided to pull him and bottle feed him so that I could try to get her udder straightened out. So um, right now we use these two different kinds i mean this is just like a soda bot some soda bottles this one's glass this one's plastic and we use pritchard nipples which you can see here they just screw on top of bottles uh we come out both of these guys get fed three times a day and um so we do this in the morning around lunchtime, and again uh, at night before we go to bed so Jeremiah is about to do the grain and fill the hay feeder. So I'm going to hand you over to him and let him show you how we do those daily chores. So just going to talk to you about what we're feeding and why we're feeding. Um, so I'm going to show you where we keep it and the ratio for mixing it for the rest of the goat herd. So we keep it in the garage away from the goats because we don't have a goat barn yet. And this is the best place to keep it dry and keep it away from other um, outside sources like any kind of mice or rodents. Um, we have a cat, which actually there's Gary right there, and he keeps everything uh, pretty secure. So there is a mathematical equation as far as ratios and how much each goat gets, but when we were doing it per the cup, it ended up just filling up a five gallon bucket to a certain level. And so as long as I keep the ratio the same, um, I can just use a bigger scoop, which I end up using this big cup and uh, all I have to do is just fill it up to the right ratio. Um, like I said, keep the ratio the same but fill it up to a certain point on the bucket which is usually about, I don't know, it's about three or four inches from the top. Um, as the goat numbers change then we'll reevaluate and adjust the level. So essentially it's just, I just go through uh, one scoop each of the, uh, the four different feeds we're doing. Okay, so the last thing I do for the uh, routine for the morning for the goats is I fill up the uh, the hay feeders we built. And we use that, well we do that using round bales. Um, this is a picture of the two round bales we currently have. That's a full one. And that one's about, well we got it on the first, so 16 days old. Um, like I said, it, you, sometimes one will last a month, sometimes it goes a little faster. These are actually really... Uh, big round bales. The reason you use round bales is because uh, one of these I get right now for $35. Um, our local hay guy that does square bales charges $5 a square bale and they'll go through probably two to three of those a day. So when you factor out the math of uh, how fast they eat a square bale and how long a round bale will last, it's pretty um, obvious why we use round bales. The downside is, is you've got to keep it dry, you've got to store it, you've got to move it. Um, our tractor isn't big enough to pick them up, so we have to maneuver them by hand. And then uh, filling up the feeder, you have to dismantle the uh, the round bale in layers, which I can show you kind of what that looks like. So as it's, you know, as a bale is being made, it's being wound up like in a circle. So when you undo it, if you take off a leaf, and I walk this leaf, 
around all the way around it it'll come off in layers and so that's how we dismantle it um, and we load it into that cart and then cart it over to the feeder itself and so I'm going to show you guys what that looks like There's a chicken. There's a chicken that's trying to get to the grade. conditioning it's only June and it's morning it's not even that hot outside so I really don't have reason to complain but I do what I want so but to be fair I wouldn't want to live anywhere else I mean like I know Arkansas heat is miserable but it's only June and my tomato plants are covered with tomatoes so there's a trade-off for all things so I'm about to strain this jar of milk um, for human consumption. Now, I showed you earlier how I have two different jars. I don't even fool with one of them. The one that goes back to the bottle babies, I don't worry about straining it, um, freezing it, any of that stuff. Um, because the way I figure is they would be eating directly from their mom. And um, obviously that wouldn't be strained. And um, so I don't, I don't worry about that. Now, obviously, like if the mom like stuck her foot in it or something, that's different. I don't want to feed them dirty milk. But if it's just directly milked out, I don't do anything to it. So I've got this strainer here from, um, gosh, I don't remember where this is from. My cousin gave it to me. I think she probably bought it from Hoger Supplies. But I, I like to order from Caprim Supply. Um, I just think that they have really good customer service, and I've always been pleased ordering from them. But you can get, I mean, like it's just a, a strainer for any sort of dairy supply. And I've got this little box of these filters that go with this particular strainer. Now I've had people ask me, could you use um, a coffee filter? To which, I mean, I'm sure you could. However, if I were using a coffee filter, I would probably filter through a couple of those and I might even double filter it because, you know, you're gonna drink this you want it to be clean now the way this works is this little filter goes on here and you just screw these parts back on top of it so i do that and um, we use a new one of these every time these are not reusable and they're actually really slow they strain really slow but um i've got a clean jar now uh we use a clean jar and um we you can disinfect these in your dishwasher by just, you know, I mean, washing them in your dishwasher will, will disinfect them. Um, one tip that a friend of mine does, which I think is really cool, but I always forget to do it, but I'll share it with you. Sometimes I remember, but not today. But um, she keeps hers in her freezer, which after she disinfects them, she puts them in the freezer. And that way, whenever she's pouring the milk in, that's that first shock of cold, which you wanna get your milk really cold really fast because it helps a lot with the flavor. So I'm gonna put this strainer on here. My jar's not frozen today because like I said, I don't usually remember to do that. And I'm just gonna pour this in here. And like I said, this is kind of slow. It's a slow process to strain this, but I'll show you what we've got going on. Now I'm going to write the date 
on the top of this jar with a Sharpie. And what I write on here, you probably don't need to, but I write humans because we do have milk that is unstrained for bottle babies in our refrigerator. And I'll take note of the different lids, but um, we have a lot of help with our kids and stuff and people that come through and I don't want anybody accidentally feeding the kids um, dirty milk, so humans. Now I'm gonna take this and stick it in my freezer. I'll set an alarm on my phone for an hour so that I don't forget it and end up with a big frozen jar of milk, which has happened many times before, even with the alarm. Now you see our daily goat routine. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our herd and what else to, goes into caring for them. Now, what we showed you today, that's our everyday rain or shine. This is what we have to do for our goats. Uh, we feed them, we milk them, we take care of the bottle babies, we deal with the milk, fill up the hay feeders. That's just every day. And I'll be back outside around lunchtime to feed the bottle babies again and again in the evening whenever I milk the other three goats. We don't do any more grain for the day. They've got access to, to all that hay. Um, and that's pretty much it. Day in and day out, rain or shine. If it's storming, we've got to do it. If we go out of town, we have to find someone else to do it. That's just part of goat keeping. It's a daily responsibility. There are a lot of other factors that go in that are seasonal or, you know, quarterly, once a month, whatever. We're always uh, mindful and checking for, for worms by checking their famantia, by pulling their eyelid down and looking to see the color of their eyelid. You can tell whether they're having a heavier worm load or not. Um, we don't worm on a schedule. <laughs> I like to to try to build some parasite resistance so we don't automatically worm every six weeks or three months or anything like that. Um, we just, we watch and uh, we worm as needed. Now, I would like to move into um, herbal dewormers and feeding them some things like wormwood and um, there are different herbs that you can feed them that can help with the worm load. We're just not there yet. Um, it's kind of on my to-do list of things I'd like to learn about. We also do uh, CDT shots. We do copper bolus. Uh, those things we do on a schedule, but it's like every six months and I keep up with that in a calendar of when who's going to need what Hello. Now you may have noticed but we have a lot of goats We actually have more goats than we want to have uh, Like I explained earlier, we ended up getting a really cool deal where we got to trade with a family that had been breeding Nubians for a long time and trade some work for our the majority of our goat herd and we went from having two goats to having um, 15 just in a matter of a few weeks. And um, several of our goats were bred. So right now on our yard, we have 14 adult goats and 10 kids, which is way more than what we want. Um, realistically speaking, our goal had at one point been to have 10 goats. And... Um, we're actually planning on pairing back some. Two of my adult goats are leaving this week. One of the bottle babies that I showed you is leaving tomorrow to a new home. Um, they're going to good places. And I am trying to figure out who we might sell. The problem is you get really attached to them. I really, I like each one for individual purposes, but there are a few of them that I feel like I could let go of. There are a handful that I know I definitely want to keep. I'm very attached to them. They're good milkers. They're good moms. They're uh, sweet with my kids. So we are planning on pairing our goat herd back because essentially I don't need this many. Right now with just milking the four that I'm milking, we're, we're getting about two gallons of milk a day, which is plenty for all the purposes that we need goat's milk for, plus some. Currently our farm is seven acres. That includes our lot, which is um, four, and our, my mother-in-law's, which is next door, that is three. Uh, so all together we have seven acres right here and that's what we, that's what we consider our farm. The goats are in a, an enclosure. All the time they have this enclosure, that's the goat yard. And it's about 7,000 square feet. Now, 
currently what we do in order to keep that from being a big problem because a, that's not enough space for that many goats. Now we bring in hay and all of that, but you have to be uh, mindful of the parasite load that can happen when you have a whole lot of goats in a small area. Um, so what we do is we have our backyard, which is where you know our kids play and stuff, and then we have another further backyard that's about half an acre, which is where we have a couple of chicken coops, and we're able to open the gates up and let the goats into the those areas um, and that keeps the grass down in those and it also helps with the parasite load so actually even though we have 20 something goats in a 7,000 square foot pen there's still grass on the ground because they're not always in there you know without access to other places our plan is even though we are cutting down on the amount of goats we have we have about two acres that's wooded um that we're currently not using as soon as we can we're going to fence that off we're going to build a barn over there and that will be uh, our primary goat yard and then we'll use this yard right by the house for kids and for uh you know maybe our moms and milk we don't have it entirely figured out at that point i wouldn't mind having 20 goats whenever we have enough space but as it is i don't actually like having as many as we have so that's something we're working on 